Hey, happy afternoon, everybody. Mark again, Air Weatherman Plus. I'm going to let you know what the update is with Hurricane Lee and what's coming after Lee. Still showing they both coming up here towards the east coast, towards the northeast. Plus, we do have still the chances for not only the rainfall coming towards the south for today, is going towards the northeast starting for tomorrow, but it is bringing those thunderstorms for tonight. You still have chances for tornadoes and not only regular damage and winds, now you have a chance for hurricane force winds and hail coming with these storms. Pretty powerful cells. So I know you need the rainfall, but you don't need these storms and potential chances for tornadoes as well with the damage and winds coming your way. I'll also get you updated on what's going on with the latest information on these two as they come into effect. The trend is still the same for the northeast, getting even closer with the impacts and maybe even closer on the next one. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Let's get into your information, guys. We do have this latest one showing that it will see a Cat 1 hurricane as it gets closer. But you can see with all the ensemble members, they all taking that westward bend that is going to wobble to the west. But it's meeting sea surface temperatures, which are cooling, drier air, a lot of shear. It's just getting eaten up so badly that it just drops off to a tropical storm very quickly and rapidly. Now, the latest update on disturbance 2 that's coming towards the east coast potentially is still at 60% in the next seven days. We can also see as Hurricane Lee comes in, we check for the chances just for a tropical depression with the euro. You can see how it bends to the west and then it bends back to the east after it comes by. So definitely if anywhere from this purple section all the way to the New England states, definitely some kind of impacts is coming your way, whether it's tropical storm or maybe hurricane force wind gusts. Definitely some impacts coming in this region. And you also can see the update on all the ensembles. This is an automatic tropical cyclone forecast. You can see where they're all showing that westward bend, then curving back to the east, a little bit further to the east. That has been the trend. So I was pretty surprised by the wobble, actually. And you see over here with the Canadian model, it's showing that it is going to be further to the east. Even the latest run has been showing further to the east. Euro and GFS is the only one that shows that it's more likely going to be further to the east. But the latest run's been showing further to the west. You see this with GFS as well. It, it says it's going to be further to the east, but the latest run has been further to the west. So I think all this is still going to track to the east. I think it was just a glitch going on through today and part of yesterday showing that western wobble. I think it will eventually fade to the east. Now you can see here in your SpaghettiOs with the Euro, the chances that these storms could go as you go towards five days. That's when everything starts changing. That's when it's really close right on the edge and it just gets that little western wobble real quick right towards the new england states you can also see this on gfs in four days taking a little bit faster already getting it up towards north carolina rather than south carolina and as you go towards five days already impacting the northeast with the possibilities of where everything can be so that's a little further to the east then maybe a western wobble so there's a little bit of difference in the discrepancy but showing on a hurricane analysis forecast system A, you can check it out as it gets strong all the way towards northeast, but then it starts milding down, weakens down greatly, and then gets down to maybe chances for a hurricane still, but it's weakening down very fast. And you can see here on your temperatures, as it strengthens up, it goes through all these warm temperatures, but then when it takes that northward push, it goes through cooler waters and just weakens down very quickly, guys. You can also see there's a lot of dry air that gets all in the system as it gets towards the northeast. Dry air and wind shear. And you can see the shear here. A lot of shear gets on this system as soon as it starts headed towards the east coast, right with that trough bringing all that shear on that system. Even hurricane analysis forecast system B agrees that this trough will be there. It will block it. It will put all this dry air, all this shear on this system and it will weaken it down greatly and so far you can see on satellite how it just tears it up too it looks really good but then it gets over them cooler waters dry air gets a lot of shear and then it just messes it up all the way down to a tropical storm now the control member according to the euro and 72 hours still has a strengthening hurricane as it goes towards five days towards northeast and taking six days to pass by the new england states still all the way down to a 964. Now, the 12Z on the Euro shows something very weird. Like, as you see with Lee, as that trough passes by, it still misses it with that trough, wobbles to the west, still gives impacts. But then when that second system starts coming into play, it kind of shoots out from the Atlantic and just shoots to the west-northwest. GFS agrees it will miss that trough just barely, 
go into the New England states and still agreeing that that second one is still headed to the west. So having that big Bermuda high pressure out here in the Atlantic and helping it go further and further to the west. Then we get that big ridge that pulls it on in. And this time, instead of going to the Carolinas, is going towards the northeast, towards the New England states. Now, this is getting a little bit to where it's trying to turn more and more. I think even though this shows a bad impact today, I think tomorrow we'll start seeing more in these model runs that it might start curving a little bit sooner and just maybe miss us all together. But once again, that is a maybe. Let's stay on facts. I will keep you updated. You can see so far with the winds for the New England states on the first one and look how close the second one comes in as well. Both of them in that same region. Showing a big area of just 50, 60, 70, 80, even 90 miles per hour wind gusts. Just a huge area. And just on Lee alone, just on the first system, it's a lot of damage and winds coming your way with possible hurricane force winds right on the coast. And that second one, we still don't have no idea where that one's going. But as you can see, the update with your Euro and GFS versus Lee. So as you go through Saturday, and then it starts bringing the heavy rain band. And now you got to remember, this is going counterclockwise. So right at this point, it's just throwing a lot of onshore flooding all into the northeast. So you're going to have a lot of problems with the flooding as that comes right on in. And it is going to bring those high waves as well. GFS takes it a little bit faster, but still the same region coming on with that spinning bringing all that possible flooding right into the northeast. So you definitely got to watch out for that. Both models is showing almost the same area where that storm could be, just a little bit faster between one or the other. But right here in the northeast, that's really a scary part. All this just shoving right this way. It's going to be a lot of flooding and big waves. It's still showing that you can have up to 20 somewheres in that bend right on the northeast whether it's gfs or euro both of them are showing that low western wobble and that's bringing all these big waves anywhere from the high teens to the 20s and get a little further out it gets even higher up but this is according to the gfs the euro shows it a little bit further to the east but still brings all these high waves right in the cove anywhere from the high teens to the 20s all the way across. Very high waves, a lot of flooding, maybe some damaging winds, maybe even hurricane force coming your way as well. But you can see it best from this shot up here. So you see it from bird's eye view as it goes towards the northeast with Hurricane Lee. You started getting that high pressure building right over the Bermuda, and that's what brings that next wave further to the west. Now, when this high pressure breaks apart is when this is going to start making its turn. On this run, it takes it a little longer than normal, and it still comes along the coast. So we will see it's still too far away to be sure, guys. A lot of these model runs is also curving this immediately. But you can also see these storms that are moving into the south center. So it's really good at y'all getting these storms for Oklahoma, going through Texas, New Mexico. Very powerful cells moving in all evening long. This is central time also up here in the corner and you see that moves through all even long this is bringing high winds hurricane force winds especially in the beginning of it look at these all these cells could easily get a chance to spin up a tornado so just be aware of that i know you need the rainfall but this is some nasty storms coming i mean look at the winds that is bringing this is your wind gust and it's bringing 50 and 60 70 miles per hour wind gust we even get a spike right there of over 80 and 90 but that's just Hurricane force winds is what they say, at least 75. But there is some high winds coming with this system, especially right here in central Texas, right in this region, the highest winds. So they have upgraded your wind alerts, and you do have hurricane force winds in this black section right here. It's significant, severe. So here's your cities and states at risk for the damage and winds for today. Your brown, your 15 is the yellow, and the hurricane force is the black. You also have chances for hail, even large hail, at least two inches in diameter in this black section. So here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for today. And the large hail is the white line on top. And the tornado threat has moved over some. So now all them cells I just showed you, you have a 2% for those tonight as they come in. Here's your cities at risk for the tornado threat. Please be careful. On a good side, though, it is bringing all this rainfall towards the south central. And it is bringing more towards the northeast. And you could get even more as this system comes along and maybe even further. 
if the second system comes along as well. So I was like, dive in a little bit and look at your numbers. You, can, you see you got a pretty bad hotspot right in central Texas. It just adds up to a lot. So far over four inches, but a pretty bad hotspot. But a lot of y'all getting some good beneficial rain coming. So I know there's storms coming involved with this. There's chances for tornadoes coming involved with this and some damage and winds. Just be careful. And that's when it's adding up mostly for the northeast. Once you go from Wednesday and Thursday and beyond, that's when it's going to start adding up to more rainfall coming for y'all as well. Easily one and a half to two inches plus is going to be start adding up. And then you got the onshore flooding. You got the waves coming, the possible winds. You got some issues coming your way. Matter of fact, when you take a look at the latest update on the ensembles, you can see that they all are doing a nice low curve, little western wobble to the west. So just be careful. It is starting to trend a lot now, this western wobble, and it will bring those impacts. Well, thank you so much for your time. God bless you and your families. I hope this update has helped you in any way. I do appreciate every single one of you. I will see you tomorrow morning for an update on what's going on everywhere. Afternoon is just for the updates, mostly for the tropics, but we have severe weather. It's going to be pretty nasty tonight. So I had to throw that in there for Texas. I know they're excited about this rain, but they don't need to be running out there all happy with these damaging winds. So be careful. Now today I want to read to you Romans 1, 13 through 17. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am already to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is a power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. <laughs> Amen. Have a great night, everybody. I'll see you early in the morning. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always keeps you safe, you and your family, every single day of your life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'll see you in the morning.